In the lush rolling landscapes of Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, once stood a mansion that was not just a home, but a testament to architectural genius. This was La Ronda, a palatial estate that echoed the distant whispers of Spanish Gothic and Mediterranean revival architecture. Built in 1929 for Percival E. Forderer, a titan in the leather manufacturing industry, La Ronda was more than a residence. It was a symbol of opulence, a canvas where history and architecture danced in harmonious splendor. The mastermind behind this architectural marvel was Addison Meisner, a man whose design philosophy stood in stark contrast to the trends of his day. While modernist architects like Le Corbusier and Mies van der Rohe were designing glass boxes and forsaking traditional schools of architecture, Meisner sought to keep the old world traditions alive. He approached each project with the same mindset, imagining that the house was from the distant past and had been added onto by generations of subsequent owners. He borrowed design elements from various cultures and brought them together in harmony to create charming, stately mansions with an air of timelessness. Going against the grain brought him much acclaim, and though the world around him was trading out the ornate for the streamlined, he became the most celebrated architect of the 1920s. La Ronda was Meisner's final commission, a project that encapsulated his architectural philosophy in its entirety. The estate sprawled over 233 acres, with the mansion itself covering 17,500 square feet. Its 51 rooms, including 21 bedrooms, were a testament to Meisner's belief that architecture should encompass not just the buildings, but its interiors and gardens. The mansion was a symphony of Spanish Gothic and Mediterranean Revival styles, with Meisner's artisan production company creating much of the hardware, fittings, and furnishings, ensuring an aesthetic unity that was rare and awe-inspiring. The house was built from coral stone, which had been quarried off the coast of Florida and imported to Pennsylvania. Furthermore, the roof tiles were crafted from a deep red terracotta and purposefully burned to create a wide variety of colors, aging the house with an artificial patina. As we begin exploring the mansion, we will enter through the vestibule positioned just above the Great Hall on the floor plan. Swinging open the wrought iron doors, we arrive in the Great Hall, crafted from coral stone with a ribbed groin vault soaring above the second floor's cloisters and floating staircase. This magnificent room was complete with leaded stained glass windows contained by Gothic tracery and decorated with 17th century Spanish furniture. To the other end, set within a pointed archway, the grand staircase leads to the cloisters, but before we head upstairs, let's cross the other direction in the Great Hall. Here we find the living room with exposed wood beams reflecting from the floor's glazed black Meisner tiles. The fireplace, designed to imitate Spanish Gothic, boasted an opening of 7 by 7 feet, appearing perfectly balanced by Meisner's control of proportions. As we exit the living room, let's cut across the Great Hall and take the door to the right of the staircase. This leads us to the dining room, with frescoed walls surrounding a 17th century Spanish dining table stretching nearly 18 feet long and carved from a single piece of wood. Returning to the Great Hall, we can round the corner and continue up the grand staircase to find the cloisters. This intimate gallery glows in multicolored light coming in from the stained glass windows, and while I would love to continue this tour with you, the story of La Ronda is tinged with the melancholy of loss. Following Ferdinand's passing in 1969, the estate passed through various hands, each owner chipping away at the original 233 acres. By 2009, the once majestic estate had been reduced to a mere 3.2 acres. Also in that year, the mansion, despite its historical significance and architectural beauty, was sold for $6 million and the new owner, hidden behind a corporate veil, announced plans for its demolition. The demolition plan sparked a fervent preservation battle. Architects, historians, and locals rallied, desperate to save this cultural treasure, arguing that La Ronda was in exceptional condition for its age. Yet despite these efforts, and even a last-minute proposal to relocate the mansion, the wrecking ball prevailed. In October of 2009, La Ronda was demolished, a move that many mourned as a tragic loss to America's architectural heritage. La Ronda's demolition was not just the end of a building, but the closing of a chapter in American architectural history. It stood as a reminder of a time when buildings were more than structures. They were narratives of art, history, and culture, masterfully blended together through classical training. Addison Meisner's legacy, embodied in La Ronda, was a testament to the power of architecture to transcend mere functionality and become something timeless, something that speaks to the soul. In the end, La Ronda lives on, not just in photographs and memories, but as a symbol of the eternal struggle between preservation and progress. What did you think about La Ronda and its fate? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.